anyway, we're here. I'm here. It's good to be here. Good to see you all. Hi. Welcome. All righty. I know Mary and Ken are out of town today. They uh, are up in Hurricane with Mickey, so they're not here. But I think the rest of us are here. So it's good to be here. Uh, what kind of announcements? Lent is coming up in a mere two weeks. Judy, what would you like to announce? So, two things. Let's see if I can remember the second one while I say the first one. <laughs> um, <laughs> you the, de the deacons are meeting Tuesday night at 6.30. Zoom, right? Zoom. And Good morning. The, and the second announcement is... Uh, we need more subscribers to our YouTube, what do you call it, channel? YouTube channel. Okay, and we need 50 so we can stream live, and we have 36. And we need not only you, but you and your neighbors and your friends. You don't ever have to pay attention to it again. <laughs> so I want you to subscribe. Do, the, it's the easiest thing in the world. They just go to YouTube, look for San Diego First Church of the Brethren, and boom. No money involved, and no no obligation to go on to watch after that. All right, so Linda. And this morning, I have a huge bag of All right. <laughs> YouTube channel is just, San Diego First Church yeah, of the Brethren. You can just go in there and look for San Diego okay. First Church of the Brethren. Very simple. And then click on one, like Christmas Eve, for example, is up. And then it says subscribe. Push a button. Subscribe. Yes. All right. Um, so we'll have an Ash Wednesday <laughs> service. We'll be online uh, because it will be. But it's going to be on the line at 7 o'clock in the morning this year. Um, are you okay if I all take my mask off and I'm up here? Okay. And I will stay <laughs> six feet away. Um, but we are having a Lenten service. Uh, the Ash Wednesday service will be Ash Wednesday, March 2nd. It'll be available at 7 a.m. It's, it's as long as you want to because there's a section in it that has us looking at something called a wellness wheel. So it gives us an opportunity to kind of reflect over our lives and then, um, and you can take as much time to do that or you know, no time to do it, that's fine. And then it moves into the imposition of ashes. So 7 a.m. it should be up and running and I'm gonna be putting that together this week. So we've got that. And then each Sunday morning, we're looking at the theme of full to the brim. Um, and this is um, a theme that really takes us to the realization that our lives are full and they're full to the brim with the love of God. Uh, and so we're going to be taking a look at the fullness of our relationship with God during Lent um, and maybe not and, and looking at uh, repentance and turning toward God from a sense of fullness as opposed to a sense of scarcity. So I'm really excited about that theme throughout Lent. Um, there will be Lenten kits. Judy's working on Lenten kits. And they will have the wellness um, thing in it. They will have some other aspects of Lent that we can use during that time to um, help us as we prepare ourselves for um, the death and resurrection of Jesus. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the prayer support and the um, spiritual support that I felt over the last year, uh, last year. it really feels like a year. Um, when I left in January, I didn't expect to be away for a month, um, but life happened and um, I was just really glad to know that the congregation was supportive and that throughout that time I felt your love and your care uh, and your support as I, um, as I, as my sister died and as I continue to work through that grief process. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, other announcements? Oren. Mark, when I mentioned um, referral. Oh, yeah, referral. 
Oh yeah, Pearl Hearts has a service coming up. We're gonna be celebrating her life with the Mennonite, um, San Diego Mennonite Church uh, on Sunday the 20th, not this week, but next week. It'll be at 4 p.m. here in this space. And um, Stanley Green, who is a, um, like a, I think he's a district or a national representative for the Mennonite Church. He'll be coming to officiate that service. So uh, Pearl was a member of our congregation and continued to be an associate member of our congregation. Instrumental in starting VORP, which was um, a reconciliation program, Victor Offender Reconciliation Program. And uh, so, and she died June of 2021. So we'll be celebrating her life here on the 20th at 4 p.m. Sunday. And my understanding is that there'll be some light refreshments outside after the service. So mark your calendar if you want to attend that. Anything else for announcements? Wonderful. Okay, it's good to be here, to be able to come together as a faith community and celebrate uh, the celebrate the goodness and our gratitude for Jesus and God as we celebrate and praise together. Let's create our sacred space, um, and we'll participate in the breathing ritual. Right? Y'all probably didn't do that in the last month, but we're to bring it back today. So uh, let's create our sacred space together. Oh, head wait for Judy. It's a forehand piece.
Josh will be sharing in the one, and uh, we as a congregation will be sharing in the all. One, oh, I, will, I will call upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the ageless one, O oh, my soul. I will praise the ever-living God all my life. I will sing praises to my God throughout my living. For the Lord is steadfast. Put not your trust in the great, nor in any child of earth. For there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And in that day, their thoughts persist. It is God who has made us and God who we belong. Happy are them for whom the God of Rebecca's line is their help, whose hope is in the creator of all, their God, maker of heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, keeping faith forever. Bringer of justice to the oppressed, bringer of bread to the hungry, the compassionate God sets the prisoners free. The all-seeing God opens the eyes of the blind. The just God lifts up those who are bowed down. The righteous God loves the righteous. The mother of all of us cares for the stranger. Orphan and widow she bears up. But the way of the wicked she confounds. The majestic one shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. I invite us to center ourselves as we sing the song, O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
I invite us to prayer. The Spirit of God is upon us. Lord, bring glad tidings to the poor. Let us hear. You heal the brokenhearted. Heal us, too. You free the prisoners from their jails. Free us from ourselves. Loving God, please come to us and send us out from this place forgiven. Send us out to the poor, to the brokenhearted, to the imprisoned, and in care for ourselves. Amen. As we come to this time, you'll see that we're having a children's time. The um, Mary and Cheryl and Linda wrote a grant that is purchasing books for Rowan Elementary School. And as a part of that grant, we as a congregation get to hear some of the stories that uh, will be uh, given to Rowan. So during the month of February, it's Black History Month, so we'll have several stories. And then the second and third or fourth Sunday, I forget exactly when, we'll have a couple more stories as we move toward Easter. So Linda, come on forward. I was looking for a wipe, but I don't see a wipe, so. I think nowadays, my understanding is, I'm okay taking it. I mean, okay. it changes by the minute, doesn't it? Does. it? Okay, is this on? No, I think you have to push it on. There you go. There we go. Okay, so if we sit separated like we do when we do our Sunday school time together. Okay. <laughs> I know, it, it was so much fun when we just cozied up together. <laughs> okay, so this book is called The Undefeated, and the author says, I started writing this poem in 2008, that was the year my second daughter, Samaya, was born. And three months later, Barack Obama became the first African-American president of the United States. This poem was my tribute to both. And in this book, in addition to the very spare poem, it's his, the historical figures and events featured in the poem, in the back of the book. And I already gave Josh the sneak preview that he can be looking at that part himself. Okay, so starting out, okay, this, is for the unforgettable, the swift and sweet ones who hurtled history and opened a world of possible. Yes, the word is possible, not possibility. <laughs> and the figure is Jesse Owens. I will simply say it and leave it at that. Boy, this is gonna be a <laughs> interesting, okay, here we go. The ones who survived America by any means necessary. Whoops. You know what? The flipping back and forth isn't working. I think I'm just going to straight read the poem and show you the amazing illustrations. And then y'all can maybe look at it later. And the last line was, the ones who survived America by any means necessary. And then the next page simply says, and the ones who didn't. This is for the undeniable, the ones who scored with chains on one hand and faith in the other. I'm trying to help. <laughs> have Susan be able to see him too. This is for the unflappable, the sophisticated ones who box adversity and tackle vision. who 
who shine the light for the world to see and don't stop till the break of dawn. I am just amazed page after page by the power and the beauty of the illustrations. This is for the unafraid, the audacious ones who carried the red, white, and weary blues on the battlefield to save an imperfect union. And I do need a point out that this is uh, Congressman John Lewis over on the side here. The righteous marching ones who sang, we shall not be moved because black lives matter. This is for the unspeakable. And I'm sure that you can't tell from where you're sitting what this is. This was the diagram of how they brought the slaves over in the belly of the slaving ships. This is for the unspeakable. And it has broken glass on the framed pictures of the Black family. And again, it repeats, this is for the unspeakable. And it has pictures of police violence, victims and victims of other violence. This is for the unlimited, unstoppable ones, the dreamers and doers who swim across the big sea of our imagination and show us the majestic shores of the promised land. And I'm guessing you guys recognize that. Who's that? Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr., you got it. And I'm curious, have they been doing anything for Black History Month in your school, Josh? Okay. What kinds of things have they been doing? Uh, I mean, we've just been celebrating it, and they keep repeating it on the news. Okay, okay, so they're keeping it in your consciousness yeah. in a number of ways. Okay, cool. Okay, now they start mentioning some names here. The Wilma Rudolphs, the Muhammad Ali's, the Althea Gibsons, the Jesse Owenses, the Jordans and the LeBrons, the Serenas and the Sherrills, the Reese Whitleys, and the undiscovered. This is for the unbelievable, the we, the we real cool ones. This is for the unbending, the black as the night is beautiful ones, celebrating the amazing music that we are blessed with. This is for the underdogs and the uncertain, the unspoken, but no longer untitled. And this just kind of gives a lot of room for our imaginations. And <laughs> I wish I could share the awesome stuff in the back of the book with y'all, but obviously there's no time. This is for the undefeated. This is for you and you and you. This is for us. and showing you the, the dense, awesome information that is given for every single illustration. And the front and back covers are amazing. Yes. So let's say a quick little prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the mini grant that is making it possible to give to Rhoda Elementary such inspiring 
books that will help uplift and educate and open eyes and minds. And we pray for our hearts to be open and to stay open to being aware of all that goes into Black History Month and the truth be told aspects that those of us who are older never learned in school. And we ask that you would pour your peace and blessings on all of us of all colors and help us to live as one family of your beloved children. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. And here you go, Josh. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. I invite, I invite us, there we go, I invite us to a time of prayer. As we come to our time of prayer and our time of community life together, I would invite us to consider the joys, the gratitudes, the challenges that we have that we would like to share with one another so we can continue to keep them in prayer throughout the week. I think one I would ask you for would be to continue uh, prayers for my family as our the celebration of life for my sister Sandy will be on March 12th um, down in Baltimore, Maryland. Can we email you for that link, right? Yes, yes. I can easily throw it out too on a prayer chain link for okay. folks that want. I can do that too. What else would you like to share? Concerns, gratitudes? Okay, I have a gratitude. We now have 42 subscribers. Woo, woo, it went up quickly. That's very exciting. Eight more. That happened in the last hour. Yeah. <laughs> God at work. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right, uh, my soft Linda. Yeah, I, I just wanted to share the beauty of the service that was already held for your sister. It was just quite, quite moving and quite, I was glad to be there to support you and to also learn about this amazing person. So, thank you. Thank you. And I have a concern that y'all might not think about. Prayers, please for everybody who works in the flower industry and in the service industry, especially in restaurants. Valentine's Day and Mother's Day for them are nightmares. I have a dear friend who works at a florist shop. She says sometimes they work 12 hours a day and Sherilyn also used to be a waitress for six years and she had the same experience Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. So prayers, please, for them. And, you know, may we all just give them little bits of grace. <laughs> and um, I will also say that it is a uh, gratitude of the beauty of our weather. I mean, living in paradise, I feel almost guilty when other people are battling feet and feet of snow and snow ice and sleet, but it sure is wonderful to be able to appreciate greenery and nature and the beauty that God puts around us. Thank you. John? Yeah, I have a gratitude for uh, cataract surgery <laughs> on Tuesday. Uh, I can actually see the board maybe after this. You know. um, the uh, concern part of that is I, uh, I'll be out for a while, can't really do much of anything, and I've been doing really well physically and getting back into swimming and working and everything, and just uh, that's gonna be on hold for at least a couple of weeks, hope no longer, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm grateful for it. And my other concern, I have two other concerns. I have a relative in Oceanside that's had a stroke, mm -hmm and uh, 
she's a tri-city and she's really not getting, she's 80 and she's really not getting the care that she sh has had some problems with the care she's getting. So our prayers for her name is Lenore Clark. And um, finally, uh, for Christopher, my son, who has received his, the divorce is final, but there's still challenges. He wants the dog and, and she doesn't want to let him have it. So it's going to be the struggle. Might have to get a lawyer involved. I hope not, but uh, she's in Washington. He's here and uh, just prayers that that can be resolved without too much pain and fighting. I did forget to share the gratitude for answered prayers. Um, several weeks ago, Letty Seho had a surgery for breast cancer. They found out just the other day that all margins are clear and it was a totally successful surgery. So praising God for that and hoping and praying that all will continue to be well. And I would ask you to keep Catherine in your prayers. Um, she has long haul COVID, which means she's long hauling it. Um, so she continues to have symptoms. Some days are good days, some days are bad days. She's not, my understanding is she's not contagious, but she's just exhausted. So she works when she can, she rests when she can. Um, and there are some She'll be going through some testing, I think, for neuro stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she's got an EKG set, um, <coughs> set up. So there's some um, challenges that she continues to work with. So mm -hmm. keep her in your prayer. And Evan, her son, um, who we have been praying for for a long time and was able to get sober housing at his college, um, is, is still in sober housing and is still sober but struggling with depression. So um, that doesn't make sober living any easier. So we want to keep Evan in our prayers. I have another concern. Um, the other person who has long COVID and is still struggling is Kareem. Oh, Kareem, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Kareem yeah. is, uh, he helped with the building. And mm -hmm. He lives here in the neighborhood. Yeah. He's been to a couple of our activities as well. Uh, all right, any other, oh, I'm sorry, Joanna. So used to you sitting right there, I never, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was listening to the children's corner this morning. Um, I just realized that uh, that sort of thing could very well be illegal uh, in these times that, uh, that we have uh, staring us in the face. I want to pray for, uh, uh, for all of you. I want to pray for the hearts of the, of the book burners uh, and, the, uh, uh, and especially the, the, uh, the church leaders that are often in the, in the forefront of, of, uh, of this act. Uh, and, uh, the, actually, I, I use the term book burner. It's really book banning, but how far are we really from book burning? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So that just to amplify on that, it's the you know the learning and discussing and teaching about Black History Month. Yeah. It's it's a, become a very a difficult for teachers, a real challenge because some of them feel like their jobs might even be threatened. Wow. So it's just issues surrounding that. Wow. It seems odd. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this. I saw a meme this week on Facebook in light of the book situation. Um, how. No one has died from reading 10,000 books, <laughs> right? And we're banning books, but folks are die dying from gun violence, and we're not banning guns. Yeah. The craziness of that, right? Or? Uh, I think I want us to pray for um, a breakthrough um, in, the, in the hearts and minds of the, the uh, Diplomats who are um, uh, now try, uh, trying to come to a resolution in uh, 
in uh, Ukraine. Prayers for the diplomatic efforts and the diplomats as we move toward possibilities in Ukraine. And pray for peace. Pray for peace. Oh, I have one more. Uh, I'd like to pray for the crazy drivers out there. Because so many, you know, we laugh, but there are 3,000 a month, I understand, that die over the nation from car accidents. And I've been involved, not involved, but close calls just on the freeway. And so prayers that people are not angry or whatever is causing it, the running of the red lights. The Distracted driving or road rage or whatever. And all of us, you know, we can pray for each other in that case, right? Because I'm sure I have found myself running red lights and going, what the heck was that? How did I do that? So, uh -huh. yeah. That was you. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we come to the time of prayer, as we open our hearts, continue to open our hearts to God, I invite you to a song, Fluye Espiritu Fluye. We have sung this several times and wanting to uh, share this again. The English is flow, spirit flow. Do what you will do, an invitation for God to act in our lives. I offer myself for you to use as you will. Flow, spirit, flow. We'll sing the Spanish, then we'll sing the English, we'll return to the Spanish, and we'll conclude with English. May this prayer become, may this song become a prayer as we continue to be together. Mm -hmm. to set prisoners free, to lift the downtrodden, to open the eyes of the blind, to care for the strangers. Our hearts accept that call as our ministry and mission as your followers. 
And yet, God of mercy, mother of all peoples, we confess our own eyes need opening. Our eyes need to be opened to the prison cells in which we find ourselves captive. We confess the times when our own despair is so deep that we see no way forward. We confess that our eyes are so blinded that we cannot see beyond our own needs, our own fears, our own trials. Compassionate God, with mercy and love, agitate our lives so that our eyes see those prison cells, that our minds recognize moments of despair, that we understand our blindness, and that we need to care more for others. May we experience the pardon that brings freedom, the recovery of sight that brings clarity, the support and accompaniment that brings strength and courage. May our lives, touched by your agitation and blessing of spirit, announce that this, even though we experience pain and the world suffers and there's confusion and challenge, that this is God's time to shine. May our lives reveal your light, your love in this world. We pray this in the name of the one who humbled himself, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to a time of stewardship, I would simply invite you to consider this. To do justice and love kindness. To walk humbly with our God. That is our ministry. That is our mission. Our gifts of time, talent, and service make this dream become a reality. As we listen to our musical stewardship reflection. I invite you to bring your offerings here if you would like. Our special offering this year, this month, is for Habitat for Humanity. And during this time, I invite you to consider how God is calling you to share your stewardship in this time and place. Let's listen together.
going to invite Josh up again and ask him to read our scripture for us this morning. He's reading Luke 4, 26 to 30, no, 16 to 30. He came to Nazareth where he had been raised, as he always did on the Sabbath. He went to the meeting place where he stood up to read. He was handed the scroll of Prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah, yes. Yeah. And rolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, God's Spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's time to shine. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant, and sat down. Every eye in place was on him, intent. Then he started in. You just heard the scripture make history. It came true just now in this place. All who were there, watching and listening, were surprised at how well he spoke. But they also said, isn't this Joseph's son, the one we've known since he was just a kid? He answered, I suppose you're going to quote the proverb. Doctor, go show yourself. Do you hear in your hometown what we heard you did in Caper Capernaum? Capernaum. Well, let me tell you something. No prophet is ever welcomed in his hometown. Isn't it a fact that there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah during that three and a half years of drought when famine devastated the land? But only widow to whom Elijah was sent in the Sarepta, Good. in Sidon, Good. and there was many yeah. lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Alicia. Mm -hmm. But the only one cleansed was Naaman. Naaman the Siren. That set everyone in the meeting place seething with anger. They threw him out, vanishing from the village. They then took him to a mountain cliff at the edge of the village to throw him to his doom. But he gave him the slip and was on his way. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, I clap, clap. So wonderful to see our youth participating. Thank you. It's been a rough couple of years, which is kind of an understatement, right? And it seems um, in light of the first two months of 2022, things aren't getting any better. I want to thank you, as I said before, for the prayers. They've been vital to my mental health, to my physical and spiritual health, and just my ability to live in these last four or five weeks. I have the faith that we see very dimly right now, how God's love continues to permeate the tapestry of life at this moment, whether it's death of a loved one or COVID or whatever struggle you're going through. Yet there is faith, faith that God permeates this tapestry even if I can't understand what God's doing. It's through the experiences of the past month and the past couple of years of suffering, pain, and struggle and transformation of COVID that I come to this text this morning. It may not be a traditional context that you hear this morning, but I think it's where I'm at. And I think it's a little different 
But one of the preaching professors always said, preach with the Bible in one hand, newspaper in the other, and experience in mind. So that's where we're at today. God is moving in our lives, in my life, and moving forward through these struggles. And sometimes God's disruption provide a new life landscape for learning and new experiences. Certainly God, in Jesus' day and age, was agitating for change through this fully human, fully divine man named Jesus. In the first several chapters of Luke, which you've been, I think, hearing about over the last several weeks, since Christmas at least, we've heard that Jesus was born, that's an accomplishment, that Jesus was brought to the temple, that Jesus was circumcised, that he was blessed and prophesied over. And up until this point, he lives 30 years of his life, he's baptized, he's driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, he's put through his paces, so to speak, by the temptations of the Satan, and he's just catching his breath from all of that pain, suffering, transformation, and here we find him invited into the synagogue. He's not invited to the synagogue much to preach, but here he is in the synagogue, and he's living and remembering that transformation, that spiritual transformation that he's been through. And he's possibly teaching even to those rabbis who he sat with when he was 12, and they taught him. And now he is handed a scroll. He chooses a text in Isaiah. He reads the text which is familiar to everyone who's there. And he sits down to teach. Now in our tradition, when you sit down, you're done, right? No, when you sit down here, he sits down to teach. This is a story of Jesus teaching. What's Jesus teaching? In his encounter with this congregation, I, perhaps like you have been taught, that in this text, Jesus reveals his identity. He reveals his ministry and mission, utilizing this Isaiah prophecy. And the crowd hears this revelation, and their reaction is what? One of anger. One that they remove him from the synagogue, and they force him off to a mountain to the cliff, and they seek to throw him off for the heresy that he's teaching. That's kind of the interpretation, right? The congregation is up in arms because Jesus is who Jesus is. In this, con in this interpretation, the congregation is the protagonist that keeps moving the story forward, right? It's the actions of the congregation. And that's certainly one way to think about the text. But I want to think about it a little differently today. I want to think about a story, God's story, that is moved forward by Jesus. This is a story that is being shared by Luke. Why? To help Theophilus understand what Jesus is, who Jesus is, and what Jesus is all about, and what God is trying to do, and God's way of life and love. So Jesus certainly is introducing his ministry and mission, and the Messiah from Isaiah, and yet, look at what Jesus does. Jesus stands to read, pretty normal, sits down, pretty normal, 
Every eye is on him. Anticipating his teaching. If you're upset with someone, you don't typically anticipate what they're going to say. They're anticipating Jesus' teachings. And his words are looked to have fulfilled that prophecy of Isaiah. And everybody's wondering, and they're watching, and they're listening, and they're surprised at how well he spoke. These are all things that are real positive, right? They're an affirmation of who Jesus is. They're surprised and admired and affirming. And this is Joseph's son. It's like saying, and this is Judy's son. And this is Gloria's son. They stand up in front. They read. They teach. They're amazed. It's a positive experience. And then here's where things get interesting. If you look, Jesus goes on the offensive. Not the congregation. Jesus goes on the offensive and becomes almost accusatory. I suppose you're going to quote the proverb, Doctor, go heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we heard you did in Capernaum. Well, let me tell you. No prophet has ever been accepted in his own town. What the heck? Jesus, on the offensive, agitating and irritating a congregation who affirms, loves, is surprised, and cares for him. What's that about? What's going on? That's what I wondered. So, what is Jesus doing that he feels like he needs to agitate the congregation? How many times does a pastor want to agitate a congregation? Not frequently. The congregation affirms his gifts. He confronts them. And he continues to tell stories that invites the congregation to think about how God has used others outside of the faith. The widow inside it. A widow marginalized. A woman marginalized. Gentiles all included in the mission of God. Those who are included, everyone. Jesus is teaching in this congregation, in this synagogue, he's teaching about how life is going to change now that he's here. How faith is going to change now that he's here. How being a follower of God's love is going to change. Jesus is intentionally being antagonistic to create a learning space using conflict and tension. To create a space to learn. Because if you're comfortable, you're not learning. No reason to. So as I contemplate that question, and as I wonder, is it God's time to shine? He's creating the space God's love that Jesus is bringing to community is not only for the Israelite people. Theophilus himself is a Gentile. It is to bring a global community. Everybody is welcome at the table. That's the message that Jesus is bringing. That's the love that Jesus is beginning to share. There are no marginalized. Everyone is included. Justice of God is for everyone. Everybody's welcome to the table. Jesus will announce pardon to the sinners, pardon to the prisoners. Jesus will provide recovery of sight to the blind. He will be the one who sets the burdened and battered free. 
and he is the one who announces, this is God's time to shine. This is God's time to shine. Is it? Today? Now? Is this God's time to shine? With the events of 2022 and a couple of years prior, I have to wonder how these events how these events are inviting us to open ourselves, to move beyond the current normalcy that we all crave, to move beyond that, to be transformed into today, where we are, not wanting to be where we were. Is it God's time to shine? And I had to wonder, and specifically in my case at this point, is, is it God's time to shine when my sister dies? How am I supposed to move through that loss with a shining God? I know that God is agitating and moving in my life, I know that God is agitating and moving through your life. I know that God is agitating and moving through my life and my sister's death, not in a way that blames God for taking my sister far too soon, which I have heard. Or that God needed another angel, so Sandy's that angel. I believe it's God's light to shine and it's God's time to shine in God's grief along with me. I believe God is shedding tears with me, joining me in the grief that Sandy's life on earth ended way too soon. I believe God is agitating my life, providing opportunities to examine what is creating space for me to wonder how life can continue, how we, I, can continue the ministry and mission of Jesus, one that Sandy embodied so much better than I did. I hear Jesus' confession in those, in those words of ministry and mission, and I see it in my sister. We can be agitated together with the words that Jesus said. God's spirit is on me. God has chosen me to preach the gospel of good news to the poor, sent me to announce the pardon to the sinners, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's time to shine. Those words that Jesus spoke are words that we speak, are words that my sister demonstrated and embodied in her life. The agitation that Jesus is creating in that congregation is not who he is. It's what he's asking them to do. Change change so that God's love can come and be embodied in the community and in the world. That's the agitation that ends him up on the cliff. It's not that he's the Messiah. It's that he's asking them to change, to incorporate new ways of thinking, to see life differently. That's what COVID is asking us to do. See life differently. That's what Sandy's death is asking me to do. See life differently. 
That's what your suffering or your pain or your joy or whatever you're experiencing, that's what it's asking you to do. See life differently. That's the ministry and mission of Jesus. And that ministry and mission will take us to the cliff. And it will threaten what we think, who we are, what we believe. That's the agitation that began in Jesus' words in the synagogue. That's the agitation that continues in our lives. It is God finding a way through whatever is happening in your life and using it or inviting you to find a way to know that it is the light of God shining through. I invite you, as we come to a time of reflection, I invite you to wonder what is COVID inviting you to change? What is the what are the challenges of your life inviting change? A new way to look at God, a new way to look at your faith, a new way to look at yourself, a new way for God's justice to come on earth. Let's listen, hopefully, if I can. Now that I've said this, let's hopefully it'll work. Mm. And it's not connecting, of course. There we go. I invite you to reflect, hopefully, reflect while I get on the music about how God is in your life.
as we come to the benediction, always remember the Spirit of God is upon you and has anointed you to be agitators and learners. You are not too old. You are not too young. You are not too rich. You are not too needy to bring good news to the impoverished, to give a hand to the brokenhearted, to live out the freedom and pardon through the gifts that you have been given. So remember, pack peace in your toolbox, pack hope in your briefcase, love in your lunchbox. Do not be frightened for you are and never will be alone. The God who is, whose image in which you are made will walk with you and guide you today, tomorrow, and every day. Amen. Mm -hmm.